All right, welcome back, everybody. I'm Sean TD Stewart, the home gamer, and I'm here <clears throat> again playing Final Fantasy XIV. I'm going to team right from where I'm left off. I'm in the midst of patch 2.5. Um, and the quest I'm doing next is. Uh, so I did the Keeper of the Lake. So this one should be. Uh, Talk to this dome and watch guy, and it says, uh, "I was beginning to fear the worst. Were those explosions? Were those explosions I saw? Uh, but you shouldn't waste time talking with me." Afana left a message stating that you were to return to ride to the Rising Stones at once. All right, so this one is uh, Aether on demand, and I just got this minion, this new minion. Let me show it to you real quick, right quick. Um, where's my minion guide? I can't do that. Let me uh, withdraw silly. And we'll go into our menu guide. And we got this new Midgard Summer minion. This is a little dragon. Look at that. That is cool. And just like follow me around by flying. That's tight. Alright, so we're going to. Uh, let's go back to the Rising Stones. We're going to teleport. I could have ran there. So it wasn't too far. So let's teleport back to the Rising Stones and see what's up with Afanad. And I got one, two, three, four. There's three more uh, small quests and actually a... Uh, Looks like a raid in this uh, patch. Um, I don't know, don't think I'll be able to get to them all today, but we'll see. It depends on how quick this, uh, how many cutscenes there are, and if uh, how quick I get into a raid. Praise the Twelve, you are hell and whole. I came as soon as Menophilia informed me of Sir Emmerich's, Emmerich's request. You have completed your investigation of the Keeper of the Lake, I take it? Then I would hear your report. You converse with Midgard Surmer? I swear, were anyone else to make such a claim, I would regard it with considerable skepticism. Are we to understand that the Worm Lord did not perish and has in sooth lain dormant these past fifteen years? Less a resurrection and more a rejuvenation for who dwelt in eternity, years passing as moments. Though his words were ambiguous at times, one statement left little room for interpretation. My people have heard the song, Ishgard shall burn. Clearly an attack is imminent. We must share this information with Sir Emmerich immediately. However, we dare not divulge our, your conversation with Midgard Summer in its entirety. To even acknowledge that you heard the voice of, of uh, Dravinian, Dravanian is a grave but an but necessary risk. Lest we forget, men have been executed for heretics for declaring as much. For your own protection, and for the sake of our tenuous relations with Ishgard, the truth cannot leave this room. As for how we shall present our revelations to Emmerich, Emmerich's emissary, you may leave that to me. Pray remain here for now. Is there something you're not telling us, Sean? You seem different somehow. Tis almost as if you're missing something, something important. Man, he took my mojo. Twelve for Fen. Midsguard's murmur stripped you of the blessing of the light. Are you alright? How do you feel? 
Yeah, I feel all right. I see. It is a relief to hear that you're otherwise unharmed. It beggars belief that any being could possess the power to deprive you of her blessing. Hmm. Midgard Simmer made mention of a covenant, did he not? One of the ancient myths regarding Silver Tear Falls states that when the waters came into existence, so did the Great Worm. Othic and Nimia, Brother Time and Sister Fate, decreed that Midgard Simmer ever watch over the source from which all water and magic was said to flow. I wonder, what if this was the covenant of which he spoke, and t'was not the gods with whom he treated, but Hedaean, Hadeline herself? Well, if he is watching over you as he claimed, mayhap you will have an opportunity to ask. Let us keep this matter to ourselves. I do not wish to burden our friends needlessly. Art thou a pawn or a master of thy fate? What hast thou wrought by thine own hands, mortal? Dang. He's just, the dude's just gonna be trolling me the whole time, his little dragon. My friend, I can scarce believe it. You confronted the Worm Lord and lived to tell the tale. Yep. I give thanks to Helone for your preservation. It is our sole cause for gladness. Your encounter with the Keeper of the Lake served to confirm our fears. A great worm has roared, and it makes little difference if it was one of the two in Eorzea or any other. The Dravanians are coming. I am told that Ishgard has magical defenses against Dravanian attack, though I am not privy to their exact nature. Will they be enough to repel a massive force? Ishgard has weathered countless assaults over centuries. This will be no different. And now that you have confirmed the threat, none can ignore the Lord Commander's calls for the wards to be strengthened. I dare not presume to speak for him, but I expect the Lord Commander would sing your praises. I must away, but we shall meet again soon. Countless assaults weathered, and this will be no different? Why am I not convinced? Alright, so that appears to be done. The Ishgardians have warred where the Dravanians for centuries, nay, nearly 1,000 years. In all that time, not once have their enemies breached their defenses and entered the city proper. Yet regardless of how strong these magical wards may be, I nevertheless fear that the Ishgardians are underestimating the gravity of the situation. Though it was not Miss Gardner who roared, a call to arms by one of the first brood cannot be ignored. Until such time as they choose to request our aid, however, we can do not, but observe the situation at a distance and pray that our fears are unfounded. Cool. <clears throat> One second. Turn the lights down a hair, a tick. Talk to Afanon again. Afanon has a message from Menbrida for the Scions. Ere I forget, I believe Menbrida has requested a gathering of the Scions. I assume there has been some progress concerning our efforts to combat, 
combat the Athians. Pray inform her that our business with the Ishgardians is concluded for the moment. I shall be along once I've completed my communications with the Crystal Braves. All right. So, Manbrita. Oh, she's over there. Let's go this way. All done with your talk of dragons. Wonderful, because Asians are next on the menu. Let's head to the solar cell, shall we? And I was just in there. Make me run around. This not have to go too far. Cutscene. Now that everything's calmed down a bit, relatively speaking, I mean, I thought it might be a good time to share our progress on the weapon. I believe we're on the verge of a breakthrough. Well, don't keep us all in suspense. Just in case anyone's forgotten, let's start by reviewing what we already know. So, an Asian is an immortal because its soul doesn't return to the ethereal realm when its host is defeated. Instead, it flees to the place that lies between our world and the Void. Therefore, the first step to permanently defeating an Asian is preventing its soul from making this journey. And if you recall, when we last gathered here, I had verified that White Aurasite has adequate capacity to entrap the beams, albeit only briefly. Which left the small matter of their extermination. Aye. To unmake an Asian soul, one must needs smite it with a concentrated burst, or blade, of purest ether. However, we wanted for both the data and the means to forge such a weapon. Short of experimenting on an actual Asian, you see, there's no way to gauge how much ether its soul is made of. As such, we don't know what etheric density our blade needs to have in order for it to work. So we'll just have to make the densest blade we can and hope for the best. Though, that would require a lot of ether. Hang on a minute! Why didn't we think of this before? White Aurasite can hold an absolute heap of ether, can't it? Please tell me you're joking. God's sakes, Ida. I feel as though I'm reliving the same scene over and over with you. How many times do you need to be told that White Aurasite cannot store ether for long periods? No, he's a jerk. Being intangible matter, ether is given to dispersion. Only in its crystallized form is it a stable source of energy. I will test you later on this, so see to it you do not forget. Uh, right, yes. It's all coming back to me. So our hopes rest on good old crystals again, do they? While they are certainly reliable, they leave something to be desired in the area of portability. Indeed. I am reminded of the quantity of corrupted crystals required to thwart Leviathan, and the extraordinary lengths to which the Lamentsons went to transport them. What if it should prove that a similar quantity was needed to destroy an Asian soul, or still more? I do not envy the poor sod who has to lug all of that around on the off chance that an Asian appears. That's the very problem we set out to solve. And I reckon we've found the answer. If it isn't practical to lug around the ether we need, we'll just have to draw upon another source. And the only viable source is the land. If you mean to tap the Great River of Ether, know that it will entail considerable risk. Meddling with the currents may well induce a surge like to the one which despoiled Mordona. Give me a bit more credit, will you? Why would we need to tap the river when there are veritable reservoirs jutting out all over the land? Aye, I speak of corrupted crystals. 
It might be that their aspect is out of balance, but a crystal's a crystal. It contains ether, and we can help ourselves to it. While corrupted crystals are indeed abundant, there is no guarantee that they will be in close proximity at a crucial moment. But what if we don't need them to be? What if we could tap their power from afar? A uh, malm away, say? If we could do that, we'd have ready access to ether aplenty in almost every corner of Eorzea. I've yet to put my theories to the proof, but I've got a good feeling about this. If no one has any objections, I'd like to see where this avenue leads. If you think it's worth your while, you have my blessing. But tell us, what are your theories? I, for one, am most eager to understand the process, however vaguely. I thought you might say that, but no one wants to listen to boring old theories all day, do they? I know I don't. So with your permission, I'd like to try something a bit more hands-on. I've already built an etheric siphon especially for this purpose, and I've been meaning to try it out. Thing is, the profusion of corrupted crystals in Mordona makes it something of a high-risk testing ground. If anything goes awry with the siphon, it would be better if it didn't happen within spitting distance of quite so much ether. Ideally, I need an isolated specimen. Does anyone know where I can find one? May I suggest Northern Thanalan? There you will find corrupted crystals of middling size, standing a reasonable distance apart. Ideal for your needs, I should have thought. Oh, and if you do elect to visit the place, I should be much obliged if you would assist me in another matter while you are in the area. Has something happened? Movement has been observed at Castrum Meridianum. During Operation Archon, the Alliance dealt the stronghold a heavy blow. Its facilities were extensively damaged, and its garrison reduced to a fraction of its former strength. Not long after our forces withdrew, however, their ranks were replenished by reinforcements from Castrum Sentry. They now seek to rebuild. And to this end, they have their sights set upon the Ceruleum Processing Plant. Having lost the Empire's support, the 14th Legion lacks the resources to sustain itself. To them, this is a bid for survival, and they will doubtless fight like desperate men. Though I have dispatched the Crystal Braves, I fear their strength alone may not suffice to stay the Imperial assault. I would request the Scion's aid in the defensive effort. If I didn't know better, I'd say you were trying to inveigle us into fighting your battle with the promise of shiny crystals. Well then, consider me inveigled. I won't lie, the crystals you speak of sound perfect, so the Garlians have to go. <laughs> Besides, we can't afford to beat about the bush. There's no telling when the Arsians will next appear. True that. Thine eagerness to hurl thyself into the jaws of danger cometh as little surprise. Exercise due caution, I prithee. Though you have become a crystal brave, you are yet a scion, Alfino. We could hardly refuse you. Pray, join the crystal braves and lend them your support. Thangrid and Papalimo shall accompany you. Ida and Yashtola, in the meantime, I would have you assist Moonbreeder. Scout out the crystal clusters, that the testing may commence as soon as the Garlean threat has been eliminated. If it please you, I shall continue mine own experiments on white orosite. Orosite. Thank you, Ariange. Everyone, pray see to your preparations and depart as soon as you're able. Go well, and be safe. Ah, oh, the cutscenes are so long. So now that that is done, 
Um, well, it's not done yet, is it? Is this still the same one? It would seem that the events have once more conspired to rob us of the rest and recuperation. Though I would wish it otherwise, I would ask I must ask that you head straight away to the processing plant. The fourth have already deployed to the area and await arrival of the Scions. Will Red will brief you on the developing situation. Meanwhile, I must rendezvous with Captain Ilbert at our headquarters in Uda. I shall take There we go, sorry. I shall take command of our forces there with a lighter heart, knowing that you will support the front lines. Oh now that cutscene. Serious are serious. Your duties take you to Northern Thanalon, do they not? We too must say our farewells to the Rising Stones for a time. Philemon travels to Udal and we shall serve as her escort. At my daughter's behest, I go to contact certain old acquaintances in the Gilded City. We are beset on all sides by civil unrest and imperial machinations, threatened by primals and troubled by dragons. We need all the allies we can muster. Many of my friends hold positions of power, you see, and it is my hope that they can be convinced to aid the Scion's cause. If the past events have taught us anything, then we know that Eorzea must present a united front or we shall fall. Ah, uh, how extraordinary that my little Acelia is involved in such a far-reaching affairs. I am proud that I might now stand at her side not only as a mother but also as a colleague. A colleague with influential connections, but I fear that Udal has become a place of danger even for one so familiar with her streets. Bah, woe betide the black god that so much as glares in your direction, my lady. <laughs> I shall be well protected, it seems. So shall we be on our way, then? <laughs> Alright. This is all just one quest. Yeah, it's still the same quest. Well, let me, uh... Let me finish this quest. Oh, my goodness. Alright, let's go here. Let me do what I need to do to close this one out. This one's taking forever. Cutscenes. Commander Lovalea sent word that you be coming. A veteran of your talents is most welcome. Not that I don't think we can handle the situation, mind you. I've learned a trick or two since that disaster with the Almanja. But returning to the task at hand. The Flames Reconnaissance Scouts have reported Imperial soldiers assembling a Ravon's push. Such a force is likely interested in only one thing, getting their hands on the resources found here at the processing plant. The Garleans could begin marching on us at any time, and I think it is time we speak with Lieutenant Edelston. Edelstein to finalize our counter strategy. Alright, so I think that completes. Or will soon complete this quest. Still an ether on demand. Sergeant Stewart, my soldiers yet tell of your deeds during Operation Archon. Would that we could sit a while and remin reminisce about old times? Are the Garleans on the move then? Not as such. The civilian draughtsmen have, however, come across several highly suspicious crates within the boundaries of the processing plant. I have my spares. My sappers take a closer look, and the worst fears will confirm. These boxes contain powerful explosive devices. Devices of imperial design, no less. Found inside the plant, you say? But how? We have guards stationed around the perimeter day and night. Tis likely the plant was infiltrated long before the Braves arrived. Master Thancred, have the Scions come in force then? 
Oh, who could be spared? Yes. Now there are likely more of these Imperial explosives around the place, so I suggest we spread out and conduct a thorough sweep of the compound. Considering the volatile nature of the Corellium, allowing even one such device to escape our search may lead us to, a, to us enjoying an uncomfortably close view of a rather spectacular explosion. Mm -hmm. Right then, I'll pass the word on to the fourth. Uh, what exactly should we do with the crates Sh should we find them? Bring them here to me. Carefully, mind you. My sappers will render the devices harmless as they did with the first batch we found. Very well, let's get started, shall we? So I have to find boxes now. Alright, so I gotta find some boxes. Search for inconspicuously suspicious items around the Carillion processing plant. So let's find these boxes. Uh, they really found the way to make uh, to compound um, these. They really found a way to compound this quest to make it really long. <laughs> Three more boxes. Here's one. All right, two more boxes. Sitting right outside the gate. Let me zoom out a little bit actually, give myself a wider view. See it yet. There's some stairs over here. Let's go up these stairs. See if there's anything up here.
happening. There it is. those back to Edelstein and that will actually complete this quest. This really long quest. This quest that has taken 30 minutes for one quest. Holy smokes. That is insanity. for one fetch quest with a bunch of cutscenes. Should you discover any containers that appear out of place, then hand them over to me. My sappers will determine whether or not these objects are explosives and disarm them, should they prove to be so. Alright, here you go. We have my boxes. There were four more of those blasted things. I have my engineers disassemble them at once. Fine work, as always, Sergeant Stewart. The entire compound has now been scoured from top to bottom. I should hope that this is the last we've seen of these explosives. Our troubles with Cashier Meridianum, however, are far from over. Scouts have returned with news of movement on the front. Woo! All right. That took 30 minutes to complete one quest. So what I'm gonna do at this time is, I'm gonna thank everybody for watching very much. Um, if you're watching this on Twitch, please check me out on YouTube at The Home Gamer. If you're watching this on YouTube, please check me out on Twitch at Sean T.D. Stewart. All my other social media contact and information is here at the bottom of the video on this little, uh, this little border thing here at the bottom of the video that you see. I'm pointing at it right now. Check me out. Like, subscribe, share, something. Something. Or not. Um, I'm going to give this a second. I'm monitoring the stream. And the stream seems to be... Whew, pretty far behind so I'm gonna wait for it to reach the point of where I complete the quest and then I'll end the stream so that's why I'm still here talking and just standing here doing nothing I'm gonna get a good look over character hello there hello I'm not terribly concerned if I uh, I just want to make sure I capture this portion in the stream where I complete the quest and I can't stop the stream so it'll be like at a conclusion um, and this will, video should be complete on YouTube, containing everything, start to end. So if you want to see all that. <laughs> uh, so it's almost there. The stream is almost caught up to the end of the quest. Uh, boom. Complete. All right. So that's it. Again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you all again next time. Bye. <laughs>